slightly fancier piece of wood than we'll be working on for the rest of the video. I spent way too much money in Michaels um, in order to get this particular piece of fancy wood. And I knew that I wanted to do a skull, so I painted it with regular cheap acrylic paint before I started the rest of the project. The other template is a pumpkin, and we will be working on that for the rest of the video. To make string art, you only need a few supplies. You need a piece of wood. You need a template. A hammer, some nails. Um, these are actually called uh, wire nails or brads. They were in the specialty nail section in the nail aisle at Home Depot. It was uh, $1.50 for that box. You will also need embroidery floss or uh, crochet thread to make your finished product. The first thing you have to do is choose your template. To make my sample piece, I did the skull template, and now we are going to do the jack-o'-lantern template. Now, the uh, face that came on the jack-o'-lantern template is one that you can use, or if you'd like, you can make your own face. So all I'm going to do is cut down the middle. And then I'm going to take my wood and position my template on top of it. Now, the particular, these particular pieces that are in kits are pretty much square. They are seven and a half by eight inches. So it doesn't really matter overly much um, where you put your template or which way you position your template. Just to make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm gonna throw some scotch tape on here. jack-o'-lantern design is. That is because I'm going to take my nails and I'm going to place them all around my design on edges and corners. I'm going to keep them about a half inch apart um, but I'm just going to eyeball it. So I'm going to take my hammer notice that I am not hammering all the way through the board. I'm leaving quite a bit of nail stuck up out of the wood and this is so that I can have something to wrap my string around. How much nail you keep out of the wood is entirely up to you. I just recommend that you keep all pretty even and maybe only like a quarter of an inch. I'm just going, now I did start on the very edge, but I recommend that you start in the middle and work your way out because if you start on the edge, you will have nowhere to put your hand to hold the nail while you hammer. For those of you who have a clothespin or if you have your clothespins for basket weaving, there is a trick where you can put your nail in a clothespin and then use the clothespin to hold the nail while you hammer. So it is possible 
possible. However, these are such tiny nails, it's really hard to get the clothespin on it. I recommend going very gentle with your first few hits with the hammer because these nails are so tiny, you will probably be hitting your hand a little bit. This is pine. It is a very soft wood. Um, very easy to hammer or screw into. At the end, for most of the time that I was hammering, I was holding the head of the hammer instead of holding all the way back on the handle. This is because when you hold it all the way back on the handle, you can get a lot of strength. But I didn't need strength, I needed precision. So I hold it up by the top so that I could get um, a lot of precision and especially when I was hammering towards my own hands. Now that I've got all my nails, I just need to literally rip off my paper. If you're very careful, you can possibly use the same stencil again. Um, or you could photocopy it first, or just go online and download a new picture. Now, some of the nails do have tiny little fragments of paper left on them. You can take those out with uh, tweezers. In some areas, putting a teal colored jack-o'-lantern on your front porch is an indication that you have allergy-free candy or other treats for trick-or-treaters to enjoy. So I have decided to make my jack-o'-lantern string art teal. What I'm going to do is pull, I'm going to make a slip knot. And the way that I make slip knots personally is pinch the very end and wrap it around your finger so that you have a little loop. So my string goes in front of the loop, and now it's going to go up through the back, and then pull. I have my slip knot. Put your slip knot on um, one of your nails. I am using this nail because I, I'm going to outline everything first. So I'll be able to go around and then around the mouth and then cut up through the eyes and the nose. So I'm just pulling tight on the long end and now my piece is secured. And you want to keep the bulk of the string that you are not working with either well off to the side or hold it in three fingers while you work with your other two. This is to prevent it from getting caught and tangled on all of the nails that you're not currently working. So I'm going to go around each nail, and I found that for the outline, it was it made the nicest effect if I circled each nail. So I'm going to start on the outside and go around clockwise, so you can see that I'm on the outside and just circle around and keep everything nice and tight and keep going in the same direction. So I'm just going to go clockwise, clockwise, all the way around and you will see that the um, string is kind of up off the nail. That is fine. We can always push it down as we need to. All right, so I have made a bit of a circle, so I'm just going to pop the thread back behind the stem and just let it ride across these two uh, nails to get it back to where I can keep going around the edge of my pumpkin. And if you want, you can use one fingertip or fingernail to hold the thread down 
just to make it a little bit easier in certain places to wrap the thread because you're kind of holding it in place while you do work with your other hand. And just so that you know, if you let go, I just lost two and a half stitches. So now that I'm back at my beginning, I have my jack-o'-lantern fully outlined. I'm going to jump in and do my mouth. It may help to keep your paper template out um, just so you can make sure following the nails, following the template. Uh, with the skull, it was fairly easy to follow, but this jack-o'-lantern mouth is a little bit abstract without the uh, paper. To me, at least. Others might be able to see it better. As I go from the mouth, I kind of curved up over the cheek to the eye. Now I'm going down to the nose. Alright, so my outlining is done and I do have a few pieces that are connected. Um, I did that so that I could jump from piece to piece because I want my stem, my eyes, my nose, and my mouth to remain string free. And that way um, they will be that much more obvious. You can see I did the same thing with my skull where I kept certain areas free of string so that they stood out. Alright, so now that I have all my outlining done, I am free to make whatever design I so choose um, to fill in the rest of my jack-o'-lantern. I am kind of partial personally to uh, geometric patterns, lines, and things like that, um, shapes, but you can do whatever crisscrosses or patterns that you so choose. All you have to do is to make your patterns uh, is you don't have to go all the way around anymore. You can just go part of the way and then that'll point you towards the next thing that, or the next nail that you are going to be wrapping around. two fingers and just winding it up and now I have a neat little group that I can work with. I'm going to make sure that this string goes around the outside because again I want this part to be uh, free of strings. can just push down as needed to add multiple room for multiple layers.
information that could stop you point on my design. I'm kind of happy with the way everything's woven. Maybe a little bit more here. finished it's time to tie it off. The easiest way to do that is to take my leftover string and go around and through like I'm making a regular knot. Pick a nail and then just tighten my knot onto the nail. And that's all there is to it. Snip the excess, weave it in on the ends a little bit, and you're ready for display. If you decide to do this project at home, purchasing your own materials, after doing my pumpkin and my skull, I still have a lot of nails left over. So you could make a lot of these with very little investment in materials. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another slip knot and I want my final nail in this project. Oops, the slip knot came out. I'm going to bring that down and back up. And I want my slip knot to stop coming out. instance I did finish up where my original end string was so I am just going to do 